So in a divorce, and let's be clear, we're speaking about only married spouses separating, assets are divided based on the net growth from the date of marriage to the date of separation. So to put it quite simply, we crystallize two dates in time, date of marriage and date of separation. And we look at first what everybody had on the date of separation, then we subtract to that any debts that existed on the date of separation, which can include some debts that we don't often think of, like notional income taxes on RRSPs, as an example. And then we also subtract the value of any assets each party had on the date of marriage. There are some exceptions when it comes to a house that may be the matrimonial home at the time of separation, uh, which is the house we live in on the date of separation. If that was owned by a spouse on the date of marriage, that might not be and usually won't be deducted. Um, and any debts we had on the date of marriage, of course, when you subtract a negative, become a bit of a positive, so they get factored in as well. After that, we look at if there are anything that counts as an exclusion. A very common example of an exclusion is inheritance that somebody might receive during the course of the marriage. Uh, so we would trace that into an existing asset on the date of separation. At the end, we do this for both parties, and at the end of that, we see what is each party's net family property, or commonly referred to as NFP. And we subtract the lesser from the greater, and that difference we then pretty much divide in half, and the person with a little bit more pays half that difference in the net family property to the other spouse. That's a very simplified description of how property gets divided at separation. It does become much more complicated, particularly if there are different types of assets being held, corporate accounts, that sort of thing. But in a very general sense, that's the process we would follow.